What's up guys, I'm J-Dub and today I want to show you the new Redivus R887 and I'm not just going to show you the radio, I'm going to show you the repeater build for it. Let's get to it. Alright guys, so here's the Redivus R887 set up as a repeater. Not right now, it's not. Right now we got it set up to show you all a little bit of testing. I'm going to kind of show you our rig here. I do have it set up a little bit because this bottom radio will get a little warm. Real simple. You're just going to plug any old microphone cable to the top port here, the top port here. Super simple. Hook your coax up. If you're going to use a duplexer, high side is going to be receive, low side is your transmit. Not bad at all. Um, I did talk to Redivus here. They told me you need at least 10 amps. This is a 30 amp power supply. It doesn't pull 10 amps, both the radios together. It's pulling about seven. Uh, I don't know. I would err on the side of maybe 20 amps just to be safe. All right, so I'm going to quickly show you how to get this thing in repeater mode. It's super simple. Like I said, you plug your cleaning cables into the back. You're going to come over here to your fun button. We're going to hit it once. Then we're going to hit the, what is that, the megahertz button. You're going to go to setting number 11, which is relay. Hit that megahertz button again. We're going to cut it on. Hit the megahertz button again. Now we're going to set this to our channel that we want, which mine is repeater number 19. Come down here and we're going to do the same thing. I got to unlock it. So our fun button. I got to set number 11. Turn relay on. Now we're both in relay. This is a very important step that was kind of hard to find in the instructions, but it is there. So we're going to hit our fun button, and then we're coming over here and hit our low. I don't know if you caught that, but that little bitty R showed up. That tells us to reverse transmit. So that means this one will now be receiving. You got our little R down here. So that's now receiving. We're still in our dummy load. I'm going to turn it back on. All right. I'll read the numbers off. As you can see, I'll do a quick key. You'll see our receiving is receiving. You hold it a little bit longer. Now we're transmitting. And we are at 26 watts still. So we are on high power, transmitting. Everything looks pretty good. Now this unit will get warm. Another thing, you don't need the microphone. Do you not need the microphone to do anything? I have mine set that when it receives, it changes colors. Just makes it a little bit easier for me. It is working. Let's set another radio up. We're close enough, it should still work. There's our channel 19. So, you see it's coming across. Now, I've got mine set up on an automatic cooler. Once it reaches 90 degrees, it, it cuts on. All right, so you can see we've got our, I darkened the screen up so you'll be able to see it. So down here at the bottom, we have our R, which means we are receiving on 19 RP. Our relay is turned on. Come up here, our relay is turned on again. And we're transmitting on 19 RP. We have an H right here, because that is our high uh, power frequency. CT for our CTSS tones. And that CT over here is set for the other channel, the other side of the band if you want it to uh, use this as a normal radio but we're not we're using it as a repeater so it is set up ready to go i'm going to key up a radio you can see we're receiving transmitting and let's see we are at 26 watts and that is before the duplexer so i'm going to go ahead and hook us back up to the duplexer which means we will be transmitting out into the world anyone who wants to listen to us do this test. All right, so you can see we are hooked up. WREJ544 repeater check. And you can see we're putting out about 20 watts right on it. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Now, is that the most accurate meter ever? No, it's not. But when I tested it with the Surecom, which is also not an extremely accurate meter, it, it's at 18. So as you can see, I've got these little fans 
and they're right now they're just wedged in between I'm gonna do more of a permanent setup but I've kind of angled them so they're blowing into each other and it, the hottest point is right here on the back side here if you'll be able to see that I've put a little temperature sensor right here and it just kind of sticks in there um, and that is giving me my reading for up here so as this thing gets up to 90 degrees those fans automatically cut on it cools the repeater it works pretty good the hottest I've been able to get it now give it that was when I had one fan I've upgraded it to two fans it got up to 114 degrees which I mean it was pretty warm but that was people talking on it for three hours straight. Uh, this is kind of hooked to a net, and I'll have to show you in another video how I'm, I'm hooking this up to the net. Right now, I'm not real, I'm not crazy about how I've got it set up for it. So we're gonna be changing that side of it, but this is the repeater, and it seems to work pretty good. Um, we'll do some testing now. Here's our BTEC unit that we're using. And you can see we're putting out 13.8 watts or volts, 13.8 volts. And let's see how many amps we do. Testing one, two, three, four, WRUJ544. And what do we get? 8.2. So it's a little far cry from the 10 that they were saying. Now, I did talk to the guy and he told me that, hey, maybe you don't put enough through it. So let's raise it up a little bit. So we're at 14, 15 is the max. So we're at 15 volts. And we're gonna come up here and look at our workman meter. Uh, WRUJ544. So we're still putting out 8.2 and still 20 watt. And everything on the repeater seems to be working still. So we'll set that back to our original. There's our fans cooling it back down. You will do see it gets hot quick. I think they should have put a cooling fan on this. Here's a feature too. I think y'all might want to know about. So if I come over here, you can see we're completely set up. Everything's working. I'm going to cut it off, which is going to kill power to it so let's say you have this thing in an off-grid site the site loses power everything's down boom I want to cut it back on I haven't really tested this I'm not sure if it'll work let's set our KG radio right there as showing that we are receiving something we've got our other one over here testing one two three four testing 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 Does look like we're still see receiving and transmitting. So everything appears to be working. I'll go ahead and lock these radios. So come up here, lock them in. Oh, this might bumps it. Everything's good. You can cut that off too. Um, you have your squelch and everything. You can control that right here. And you see we've got that. So it is working good. And if you lose power, at least you still have it. You know it'll still be working. So I do want to show you that this radio is interfaced with the internet. So we're going to come up here and I'm going to make it play a tune. So we're going to come here. This is my off-site computer. So here we go. It is wirelessly hooked up to the internet. There's my tone. There's everything playing. And if I want it to play my weather announcement. This is the Covington 1 GMRS repeater. This repeater is transmitting on a frequency of 400. All right, guys, so now that we've done the repeater stuff, I've tested it, showing you some of the stuff on the repeater and how it works. I'm gonna take it and we're gonna use just one of the radios and we're gonna test some wattage on it. I'm gonna show you the high, medium, low power, the high power settings, what it does when it's not in repeater mode, and I'll show you it on a non-repeater channel. That way you can kind of see where I'm getting the frequency and getting the power range and all that stuff. Let's see, just 
still beaking it out. Still in repeater mode right now, but we're getting ready to change that and it will no longer be in repeater mode. And we'll be testing all these things out for you. And then we're gonna go out to my truck. That's why I got my hoodie on now. And we're gonna do a long range test from about eight, eight and a half miles, somewhere in there. And uh, we'll let you listen to it and see how it sounds. All right, so we've got the top one here. I don't know if y'all guys will be able to see it. Well, we are on channel 16. We are coming into a dummy load. We are right here on our little Shurcon. And I know this isn't the most accurate meter ever, but I do want to show y'all. I hope you can see that. We have an H here for high. We're transmitting on channel 16, which is on the left side. So when you watch it, transmitting on high. Now let's see if we can get y'all zoomed in. So here's high power and 26 watts. Huh. That's not good. Let's go over here. So there's low one. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It's really hard to see. There you go. There's low one transmitting. All right, so low one is 3.1. Click it twice. We're on low two. Seven watts. Low three. Twelve watts. All right, medium. Eighteen watts, and we should be on high now. Back to high power, and twenty-six. I don't know about you, but that's a far cry from the 40 that they were promising. This is how I've got it set up. As you can see, I've got two fans in here for cooling, and I have tested on both. They're both identical with each other on their wattage output. So I don't know if you can, will be able to hear this really well. We're about eight miles from the repeater. I've got this microphone here hooked up to my KG935G. I'm trying to figure out a way that y'all be able to see this. We've got the radio on high power, and uh, we're gonna test and see if we can hit the repeater. So we're gonna do a quick key. We kerchunked it. Let's see if we can actually hit it. I have a software that's gonna play it back to us. Um, it's not real clear. It has to go actually out through a sound card into another radio, and I had to turn that radio up really high, so it's really staticky, but I'll show you in a minute from the same location what this radio actually sounds like and what the clarity you can expect at this kind of distance. So let's see if we're actually hitting it or if we're getting a desense problem. Radio check, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, WRUJ544. So it doesn't sound like we're getting any type of desense issues. Let me grab my phone and get the program out. So this program allows me to access my repeater from anywhere. So here's my repeater program. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the repeat function. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna make it play a tone here in a second. This will just be our Morse code beacon. So let's see if we can get a, a reading on what it's gonna look like. Now that sounded pretty good. So now that we've got that, we're gonna sit here and, and make it play a we're gonna make it play our weather report so you can see what it sounds like like i said we're not very high above the ground level here we've actually got a mountain in my way i can't see my repeater from here i cannot see line of sight if you were to get a telescope and look you would not be able to see my repeater there is a big factory in the way there is a mountain in the way there's a ton of trees in the way there's actually a point of another mountain that's kind of in the way it's like a little ridge line that comes down so let's go ahead and Look, y'all. Let this look, or let you look at this radio. See what it looks like. This is the Covington One GMRS repeater. This repeater is transmitting on a frequency of 462.65 megahertz and receiving on 467.65 megahertz from Covington, Virginia. I don't know about you guys, but that actually sounds really good and really clear. Like I said, the repeat software is not great. You got to remember, I'm on a handheld. We are eight, eight and a half miles away. I'll have to double check. I'll put it right here, what Google Maps says we are exactly to this exact same spot from the repeater. But hey, I've got no issues with that. You cannot beat that for what it is. Like I said, it's a couple hundred dollar repeater. 
All right, so final thoughts on this little thing. That's a 26 watt radio. Man, I've got no issues with it. It's going through a 50 watt duplexer. It's coming out on the other end at roughly 18 to 20 watts, somewhere in there. And it, it's working great. Um, I have to do some range testing and maybe we'll cut the power back on it and we'll do some other things. But I mean, as of right now, this thing has worked awesome. I've got a few people that have hit contacts on it from, I mean, several miles. Well, we did one range test the other day from 22 miles. Now, given I'm in a very mountainous area, so at that 22 mile mark, we were on uh, about halfway up a ridge. We're not at the top of the mountain by far, nowhere near the top, but we're about halfway up the mountain. And it gives you a pretty clear line of sight over here to my house. If you know anything about my repeater build, I'm on a 30 foot flagpole. My antenna is nothing more than the Midland, I forget what it is, I'll, I'll put it right here, whatever it's called. It's just a Midland uh, mobile antenna. It's got a real cheap uh, ground plane kit on it. And this big fat wire coming down is a mess in and plowing in, I believe a number, or a .400 cable, whatever one it was. Whatever one they had in stock, because when I ordered all this stuff, they didn't have hardly anything in stock. So, final thoughts, 26 uh, watt radio. Man, this thing works great. 40 watt radio, that's eh, a bit ambitious. I, I don't know about that. Um, I am talking with Redivis about this. Um, I'll put it down in the comments if or when they get back to me. Um, I'm gonna send this video to them as soon as I'm done making it, so they'll, they'll have it, but final thoughts. This thing, it's great. It's, it's really good, it is bulletproof. It's a heavy radio, so it's gonna dissipate that heat pretty well. Those cooling fans really help. Um, it does get hot without the cooling fans. You can see it back here. Man, the thing, it, it just, it works. I've got really zero complaints. And even at the, the 40 watts not being there, I mean, it still works good. At the time I'm recording this, I got this thing off Amazon, or off eBay, and I believe they are, you can get one radio for $194.99. So that's not a bad deal for, you know, what, three, 400 bucks. You can, yeah, 400, 200 each. For 400 bucks, you can have a 26 rot repeater, which is better than this one, which if you know, I have the Midland, I have two of the Midland radios. And then here is the interface board that we've been testing. I've got to get that one set back up so we can continue testing it. But I'm actually, these two radios are getting ready to go off site to another repeater build. And this one is going to be my at home repeater build. So sending these two off and we'll probably do a video setting those up, showing you them later on. But as of right now, this is the whole setup. Got my duplexer. I'm keeping that meter in line until I get, I've got another antenna I'm getting ready to bring in and test. So that's all temporary. Um, here it is, it looks good. I mean, it's not very big at all. I mean, here's my hand, you can see it's not very big. Here's a, a KG radio, kind of next to it for size. And my amplifier, which you could, I might mount some, I might make a box to where this sits underneath and then these sit on top. And then it has a cooling fan on top that blows down, plus these two. I might put an extra cooling fan in there. I don't know yet, but here it is. It works really well. Um, I'm just not happy about the not 40 watts, but hey, it is what it is. Beggars cannot be choosers. And right now this thing is working great. So if you got anything out of the video, go ahead, hit that like button for me. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. And like always, take someone outdoors.